Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 3. This is a recap, so if you haven't watched the program and don't want to be spoiled, go ahead and watch the program, and then if you want to, come back. And I just want to share with you, I just got high-speed internet in my very rural residence, and so I don't have to get up at 2 in the morning to upload these anymore, which is delicious. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe because that would be super exciting for me. And now we get to see the self-portraits. I love seeing how people decide to show themselves in the self-portraits because, of course, you want to have an accurate self-portrait, but you also want to stand out in some way. And so I really enjoy the creativity of what people produce. And they often tell stories about our different painters as well. And I think today is a particularly strong field, so I'm excited about this. And we have a printmaker and a watercolorist. <gasps> This is one of my most exciting episodes yet because our watercolorist does quite, quite well, and that has not happened in the past. And boy, I'm gonna look, do a deep dive and find out more about her. Maybe she'd be willing to have an interview with me. Uh, I am having some interviews with people from the program and I'm finding it so interesting. So these are really, really terrific. And I think, I think we're gonna have a very exciting episode. I know we are. You can already tell. Yeah. Oh, this is, we are so lucky to have this program at all. I know I criticize the judging uh, and people interpret that as being judging the paintings, but I'm really not. I'm a big, big fan of all these people. I don't have the guts to do this. I could never do what they're doing in four hours. Uh, it would be, just be incredibly daunting. So I'm not talking from a high horse here at all. I just like to look at different art and, and tease apart why it, why it seems to work and why, why it might not. So our first uh, model up is Alexa Chung. She is a British television presenter. And I think I've seen her in the States too. I think she might've had something to do with one of our fashion competitive programs at one point. Yeah, she looks really familiar to me. She is... Um, you know, another one of these very beautiful faces that's very symmetrical. And when I was talking with Chris Longridge, we talked about how it's much more difficult to do a portrait of this kind of face than it is a face that has a little bit more character in it. But you don't get to choose who your model is. You, you get what you get. Four hours into the competition, although they've had a lunch break and interviews and many things have happened, but they turn their easels around and, and Alexa gets to her first look, as do we, of what the participants have done. And she's going to select one of these to go home, which is an honor to be selected. This is a super accurate portrait of her for sure. It has kind of a poster quality to it in some ways, I guess because the paint strokes are so blended, but oh, wow, that is so accurate. It's, it's just amazing that somebody can do that in four hours. And when we come in a little bit closer as well, absolutely nothing is ambiguous. It's really beautifully done and not labored over at all. So this is an exciting piece. I really enjoy the colors too. Oh, and it's a, look, it's a little delight. Oh, I love smaller paintings. I, I have to say, I like small paintings. I like big paintings, but, but that's a real gem. That is a real gem. I, I think she's going to select that one, but let's see what the other choices are. Uh, oh, the judges are going to have a terrible time. I could never, ever, ever be a judge of this program. So here's the next one up. Now this person took on the whole body and boy, does it take, it must be so draining to take on the whole body because you got to make a choice. You know, you can only spend so much time on parts. And so I don't think you can spend as much time on the face as you would if you were just doing the face. But boy, is she accurate in terms of getting the body proportions right. And a little closer up, you know, does it have a resemblance to Alexa? Not really, but boy, did she ever nail the body in the, in the relaxed posture that she had while she was sitting. That is super, super impressive. Now here's the watercolorist. And I bow down, I bow down, I bow down. This watercolorist knows what she's doing. This is just, just exquisite, exquisite work. Look at that. Oh. That's what I love about watercolor. You know, you get this transparent kind of thing happening. It has, you, you 
the 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 paint tells you exactly what it is it's not it's not hiding what it is you know you're you are having to deal with droplets of paint on paper and managing it and boy does that take a lot of time on task to be able to do that and as well and she's also got a resemblance and look at that from far away oh i even know the size pad she's working on i enjoy that size as well that is just amazing to me uh, she's the best watercolorist we've seen on this program so far and typically the judges do not are not fans of watercolors, so I don't know what's going to happen. Now Alexa's going to pick one to go home, as I said, and let's see which one she picks. I thought she would pick that first one, but let's see. Oh, she picks the middle one. All right, well, that surprises me. Boy, these celebrities have had some pretty surprising picks, um, especially the... <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't bring this up, but one of uh, the more beautiful models and whatnot, they tend to pick uh, pictures that uh, that don't show their facial features very much. Maybe they become very accustomed to seeing their facial features all the time and want something else. This is Nish Kumar, and he is a British comedian and TV presenter. And I'm not familiar with him, but let's take a look. Ah, oh, well, now, now we have more of a character face. Yeah. And the backgrounds, boy, the backgrounds today are very, very subtle. We don't have any pattern going on. Everything is quite quiet in the background, which I kind of like because it means that you can get really involved in the face and in the figure. So you'll have um, a busy section and then have quiet area behind. I like to have busy and quiet juxtaposed. Four hours in, uh, artists turn their easels around and we get to see our first looks. And of course, Nish is going to pick one to go home. Oh, wow, that's an exciting piece, isn't it? Look at that. Wow. Oh, boy. I really like that. One of the things that I like about it is just it looks like the figure is emerging from the canvas instead of being uh, placed down or, or pasted on. Oh, it's even stronger when it's cropped in that manner. Wow, you can really see the brush strokes. Boy, that's beautiful. And all the blues and the black. That's just beautifully done. Those blues and those blacks really set off the orange tones in his in his skin. This person really understands the color wheel very, very well. That's beautifully done. Uh, it sure looks like maybe some palette knife work is going on there as well, but I don't know enough about, well, um, what do you call it, oil painting to know. But uh, that's an exciting piece. That's a very exciting piece. Oh, here's a close-up. Wow, look at that. Ooh, wow. That's beautifully done. I mean, that's what I like from um, any painting is, you know, that there's information when you're up close and then more information when you pull away. I think the judges are really gonna like this piece, but uh, I'm gonna root for my watercolorist no matter what. So I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen. I never know what's gonna hash, no, know what's gonna happen as well as hashtag Joe was always wrong. I'm nearly almost wrong. Oh, this is our printmaker. Now, it really is amazing that someone can uh, this is a, a linoleum print, and that someone can do this. I mean, to get a likeness from you know, a linoleum print. Uh, I just have absolutely no idea how someone would go through the process of this. It's, it's fascinating to me. It does mean that you have to have probably a very, very, very strong ability to see black and white, and, and then you have to create grays by putting minimal, um, more strokes in where it's where it's white and less strokes in where it's gray. I have no idea how you would do that on the fly. I just thought this would take way too much time for someone to enter with this kind of medium, but but she did it. Oh my gosh. As well as you, you don't really know what you've got until you go and print it out at the very end. I'd be holding my breath the whole time and pass out. Oh, here's the last one. Oh gosh, that's fantastic too. Oh, what are they gonna do? So many good painters today. Oh, this is a real dilemma. Well, that's a beautiful piece. All of them really resemble him, and and yet they're all very individual in the way that they've decided to, to show and, and use their talents. And by talents, I mean these people have been working at this for a long period of time. You don't wake up one morning and know how to do this. It means you've had time on paper, time on canvas, and I just so appreciate that, they, that they've done that. Even those blacks, Wow, that's a really, really black, black. Yeah, I think that, that's amazing. This person has used black and yet hasn't carried it over into the skin tone so things aren't dulled down. Even from far away, it has a tremendous impact. 
that takes a lot of color mixing. That's very interesting. Much darker palette than I'm accustomed to, but which can tend to get very dull, but it didn't. So those are those are all great. All right, let's see which one he picks to take home. I have no idea which one he's going to pick to take home. I would be thrilled with absolutely any one of these, but let's see what he picks. Oh, he picks the, the print. Wow. Okay. Well, there we go. Pretty exciting. All right. Well, now we have one more uh, model, and our next model up is Philip Glenister, and he is an actor. I am familiar with him. I recognize him from programs. Uh, oh, I don't know, some something like maybe a cop program, you know, some sort of um, investigator or something. I don't know. There's something about his face that's just very, very familiar to me. So let's take a look at what the artists do after four hours. I didn't get a screenshot of them turning their easels around, so I have to put this card in instead. But we have a really strong group again this time. This is, this is one of the best episodes we've ever had. What a treat. Oh, look at that. That is just fantastic. Now, and just drawn with paint, which is really amazing. Wow, look at that. And yet it also shows a lot of restraint. Even though their layers built up, it also shows restraint and a softness and a sensitivity as well. That's, that's beautifully done. All right, let's take a more close-up look. Yeah. Oh, now the question, does it resemble him? Um, it has some features that resemble him, but boy, it's, it's a dy dynamite painting. I mean, I'm just going to judge it as a painting. It's a great piece. Oh, and I also like that it's a rectangle. Yeah, beautifully done. Wow. I think he's going to pick this one. But I've said that about every, every one of the first ones that's shown up. This is such a harder view to do. When someone is looking directly at you, of course their face is going to appear sort of flat anyway. So it's, you know, you don't get to choose where you're going to be set up. So this person kind of drew the short straw on this. Not having three-quarter view makes it way, way harder to find angles and the um, planes of a face. So that's a little tough. Something's a little off when it comes to the, sh the shape of his face. Not the individual features, but the shape. And I'm curious to see when we pull away if that will still be the case. Because one of the factors we have to remember is the final commission is going to be put in a gallery. It's a 10,000 pound commission for a gallery. And in a gallery setting, it has to read from across the room, which is very different from in your home. Most of us have small rooms in our homes, not gallery sized rooms. Yeah. That, the broad shoulder, shoulders really give it a more depth than what it had when I, I clipped that piece from close up. Oh, look at the colors here. Wow. Oh, oh. I lo love the greens against the oranges. That's, that's beautifully done. Does it nail his likeness? Um, I'm not convinced about this. Yeah, not really. I think this is one of those cases, and this has happened with other... This has happened three or four times in the years of the program where Stanley Tucci is the one that always comes to mind. Nobody could quite get the likeness. They kind of danced around it all the way, but they all produced really good paintings. And that's what's happened here today, too. But that's a very fine painting, beautifully done. Oh, the color. I wonder how he mixed that color of that shirt. There's Viridian in there, but there's also something. Oh, I bet it's, I bet it's Prussian blue going on in there, too. It has such a depth of color. That's, that's, um, so let's see which one Philip picks to take home. And remember, this is an honor. It has nothing to do with the final judging of the episode. Oh, he picks this one. Yeah, that's the one I would have picked too. That's a beautiful painting. I love the unfinished quality of it as well. So now we get to the final judging. Now in the final judging, it's been an exhausting day. Yes, there's been four hours spent in the painting, but there's been a lunch break. There have been interviews that they've been interrupted for. Remember, they had to get to the venue. I'm sure none of them slept the night before because of nerves. I just can't imagine doing something like this. It would, it would knock me out for months afterwards. And I've talked and had some interviews with people who've participated, and indeed it does. It is just you know, the elation of finishing is great, and then, and then you know, you got to recover. All right, so the first one they pick is the uh, linoleum print, and I have to admit, that is darn impressive, so yay. I'm glad that that person got to the finals of this episode. 
And this one, yeah, this was a really strong painting as well. So I like seeing this in the finals as well. Now you know I'm pulling for the watercolor artist. Not just because she's a watercolor artist. I mean, that's usually why I pull for somebody, but because I think she's so gosh darn good. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's a memorable painting. That's a painting I'm going to remember for a very, very, very long time. Now, here comes my favorite part of the program. My favorite part of the program is where they show you the painting that they did, their self-portrait, which we saw at the beginning. Now remember, they had unlimited time to do the self-portrait and then what they were able to do in four hours today. Although some people do decide to work during their lunch hour as well as during the breaks. And I believe that that ends up giving them probably five and a half hours altogether. However, during the times that they're taking breaks or have lunch, they don't have access to the model. So, but they do have access, remember, to technology and, uh, and in some ways that's really necessary in this setting because the model is, is pretty far away, to be honest. It, much further away than you would place them in your studio. There is quite a bit of difference between, for me, between what this person did in unlimited time and what they did today. But I think both are really fantastic. And what I like to look for is a style. You know, can you see a consistency of style over time? A consistency to the work and I could say yes these look like they were painted by the same painter so this person is solidly locked in and I'm sure is having a very successful career now let's take a look at the next one next one oh this is my watercolor gal oh my gosh yeah I've got to find out more about her and uh, and search her out she I am very intrigued very interesting in her self-portrait which is um, kind of puzzling in some ways. It's it's much more, um, it almost looks like the one that the self-portrait was the one she did today. It looks like she had less time on that one. It has a more unfinished kind of quality, but I just think she showed up today with her game face on and just, and just nailed it. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. All right, well, I'm pulling for her, but who knows? They have yet to pick a watercolorist to go very far in this program at all. And here's the um, printmaker. It's a little hard to see her print, actually. I'm not, um, hmm. Yeah, it's hard to see the print. It just is, is more, um, probably took, well, obviously took a lot more time in, and is a more condensed size. Now, the final judging begins. The final judging. Oh my gosh, what a day. These three people, only one will be chosen to go on to the semifinals. The semifinals is usually around episode eight or nine, and that's when we have our eight participants, it's either eight or nine, who all paint against each other for the finals. And the finals ends up being three people. And then in that episode, they choose one who becomes Portrait Artist of the Year. So let's see who the winner, winner is. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm so excited. It's my watercolor gal. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So excited. So this is season eight which means this was 2021. It took till 2021 for watercolorists to get to this place. I'm so proud. Uh, so remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Uh, please join my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.